The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I embroider the world upon a loom. I decorate with dreams my tapestry. Here in a little lonely room, I am master of earth and sea, and all the planets come to me. The spinner of fancy, the weaver of dreams. Man was born to do and dare, and if he cannot do and dare while awake, then he will do and dare when asleep. And a million years from now, Will it have mattered much? And you believe that mumbo-jumbo fortune teller nonsense? It's coming true. Oh, what's coming true? Her predictions. She said we'd be in the ocean. This is only New York Harbor. It's still part of the ocean. Yeah, she said we'd be on a ship. This is only a ferry boat. But it's still a ship. All right. She predicted fire. Where's the fire? Uh, the fire, well... You, uh, Malone! Malone, help well, me! Help me! What is it? What is I'm it? I'm burning! I'm burning up! Our mystery drama, Tobin's Palm, was adapted from the O. Henry classic especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Robert Dryden and Fred Gwynn. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Shakespeare wrote of star-crossed lovers. However, many of O. Henry's lovers only had their wires crossed. This was probably because neither the telephone nor the telegraph existed during the lifetime of the Bard of Avon. Well, whatever it is that crosses young lovers, ancient, medieval, or modern, it is the stuff of storytelling and meat and drink to a storyteller like O. Henry. And since this is a story that deals with fate... Irreversible, implacable fate, we shall ask the master himself to tell it. It so happens I'm part of the story. I'm a character in it. But I don't enter until pretty close to the end. And when I do, I won't know anything that's happened up until the time of my entrance. Furthermore, I won't even use my right name, William Sidney Porter. Or even my legitimate alias, O. Henry. For reasons of my very own, I shall call myself Mr. Maximus G. Friedenhausman. Now, you remember that name, Maximus G. Friedenhausman. Well, however, too much explanation is like too much yeast in the bread or too much water in the bourbon. Now, let's get on with the yarn. Our hero is a young fellow named Daniel Aloysius Tobin. As bright and handsome a lad as was ever produced by the land of the green. But as we encounter him tonight in a Manhattan watering place, his true color is blue. Do my eyes deceive me, or is it Daniel Aloysius Tobin? Oh, leave me, Malone. Leave me. This, this is Daniel Tobin. This teary-eyed hulk. This sad, lugubrious... Malone! Can this be Daniel Tobin of the sweet voice, the light heart, the dancing smile? I lost her, Malone. Lost her. Uh, lost who? Her. Is there more than one her? I've lost my own Katie Mahorna. Katie Mahorna? Katie Mahorna. My very own Colleen from County Sligo. What am I to do? I've, I've lost her or she's lost me. Now, what am I to do? Why, find another man. Oh, no. Another like Katie? It happens every day. What happens every day? The story. What story? What story have we been talking about? The story of Katie Mahorner. Well, how could it happen every day? There's only one Katie Mahorner. <gasps> Why, there's a hundred thousand Katie Mahorners. Now, how is that possible? Uh, that's because she isn't always named Katie Mahorner. Sometimes she's called Bridget O'Sullivan, or Mary Fitzgerald, or 
Maeve McCoy or Annie O'Connell. What are you talking about? Ireland. Ireland? You're intoxicated. Katie Mahorner is Ireland. I'll, I'll take you home. Ask me why Katie Mahorner is Ireland. Why is Katie Mahorner in Ireland? Because, my boy, we've left her there. Well, of course I've left her there. Oh, we say to the Katie Mahorners, I shall go to America, where the streets are paved with gold, and there's not an English landlord to be seen, and I shall make my fortune. Then, Katie, my darling, I shall send for you. Uh, this is what you said to Katie Mahorner. This is what I said to Katie Mahorner. You and a hundred thousand other brave, bright lads as you took to the ships. Uh, but... But what? It is not to be. What is not to be? The reuniting of the Daniel Tobins and the Katie Mahorners. Soon she's forgotten. I've never forgotten. Tobin, my lad, it's human nature. Out of sight, out of mind. Off with the old love and on with the new. I can never forget my Katie. And for your information, Katie left County Sligo three months ago. And what, may I ask, did she use for money? You hardly being in the millionaire class with Mr. Andrew Carnegie. She had $200 in her own savings and $100 from the sale of my own estate. <laughs> An estate, was it? A fine little cottage oh. in the Berkshire now. And she left for America. Well, I have a letter here from her mother stating the case. And what does the letter say? Well, I shall read it. Uh, <clears throat> Dear Daniel, my Katie has gone to America to become your bride. I had given her a piece of paper with your address in New York. But when I came home from seeing her off on the boat, I saw the paper still on the kitchen table. You know how forgetful Katie is. I hope she finds you. So, Katie's come to this country to find you. Yeah, but, but how? Where? Her mother knew your address. She sent you the letter, so... All Katie has to do is write home to her mother. But you see, she may not be able to do that. Not be able to write home to a mother. How is that possible? Malone, my, my Katie is a pearl, a jewel, a, a treasure. But she has this flaw. Hmm? She can't remember. She can't remember what? Anything. A lovely girl, a, a, a diamond, Malone, but so forgetful. So, so it's possible she, she cannot write home to a mother because she's forgotten her mother's address. To forget the address of one's own mother, it's awful. Oh, listen, go away, Malone, and let me suffer in silence and peace. Never say die, Tobin, my lad. Oh, die it is, Malone, because there is no living without her. How is she to find me in a city of four million people, 5,000 streets, 10,000 saloons? No, 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 it's, it's fate. Huh? Of course, fate. But everything in life is fate. This glass of beer you're now lifting to your lips. I offer you, Malone. What was this glass of beer once? The contents of that golden glass was once golden grass, grain, barley, hops that grew in a lush and beautiful field. A green field, a green field in Ireland. No, no, more like Kansas. But my point is... Yes, what is your point? A single flower, a single blade of grass, you follow? Growing up from the earth, the thick, rich, black earth of Kansas. What is the point? Reaching toward the sun... The warm and nourishing sun. We have also reached the end of my patience. Suddenly it's separated from its roots by a sharp, cold, cruel steel blade. It is carried away and bundled and crushed and macerated and boiled and steamed and cooled and it becomes a few drops of the flowing liquid that is now in your glass. And there is a moral to this little story? A moral, no. A meaning, yes. It was the fate of this blade of grass to become a glass of beer for one Daniel Aloysius Tobin. Fate. That is what is known as fate. Now, ask me what this has to do with Katie Mahorner. What has this to do it with... It is the fate of Katie Mahorner to become the bride of Daniel Tobin. Or it is not the fate. Is that true? That's true, I suppose. Now, ask me another question. Ask me if this can be... Uh, ascertained. Can this be... Ascertained? Beyond the very shadow of a doubt. Come with me. Where? To Coney Island. Why? So 
that you may learn your fate. My lord, what are we doing in this place? <laughs> fate. We shall beard the devil in her den. What does the sign say? Madame Zozo, the Egyptian palmist. What's a palmist? One that reads palms. Why would anyone want to read a palm? Because your fate is written there. What is this nonsense? If you look at the palm of your hand, you'll see lines. And? These lines determine your fate. Do you or do you not wish to know if ever you shall gaze on the beautiful face of Katie Mahorner? Hmm? Madam Zozo. Approach. I should like to introduce my friend here, Daniel Tobin. Uh, he wishes to know his fate. Short term or long time? Uh, well... Short term, ten cents. Long time is a quarter. Ask her she has an intermediate rate. I'll treat Tobin. Here, Madam Zozo, 25 cents. Now, you give us the first class deluxe blue plate special. Your hand, please. Oh! This is uh, uh, simply fantastic. This is a hand to conjure with. Yeah, and it does pretty good swinging a pick, too. The lines. Oh, the lines. Here we have the line of Venus. It shows you're in love. Uh, ah, but it is crossed with a line of Alter Farcaris. The, the, the witch? Trouble, trouble, trouble. With your sweetheart. See, it's Katie Mahorner she refers to. I see. Trouble and sorrow and tribulation over one you cannot forget. I see the lines of designation point to... Point to... Point to what? The letters of the... Two of the letters of her name. The name... The letters... K. And M. Daniela Locius Tober, did you hear that? Well? Well? What? How much more do you want for a quarter? She's like the gas meter. You have to keep feeding her silver quarters. All right. Yeah, give me another 25 cents worth. Will I find her? Will you find her? I've invested 50 cents so far. Oh, what I see, your hand. It's alive. Well, I should hope so. It's erupt. Your hand is seething with sights, with lines and colors and pictures. I see a ship. An ocean. I see fire. You will meet a fat. Man, a blonde woman. But will I meet... A blonde woman will bring you misfortune. They generally do. You will meet a man with a silver ornament and a, a man dressed all in black with a hammer. Oh, 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 oh what I see. Steam, steel, stone, white horses, a red-haired woman and a bald-headed man. They are also... Bad luck. But Katie, what of Katie Mahorner? What use are all these blonde-haired, red-haired, and bald-headed people to me? Do you see my own Katie Mahorner? The pictures fade. All I can see is a man. A man? A man who brings you good fortune. Well, he'll be the first of his kind, then, in all the world. How will I know this man? You know him by his crooked nose. Does this man have a name? Name? Oh, no. It seems to be somewhere in that name is the letter O. The letter O. Fifty million names have the letter O. Is this the best you can do, Madame Zauza? Madame Zozo. I haven't given you his name. At least I have given you his crooked nose. And, and he will bring me luck. He will bring you great good fortune. And you do not see Katie Mahorna in the lines of my hand? The last picture I see is the man with the crooked nose. Ain't it remarkable? Oh, ocean, fire, a ship, a fat man, a blonde woman, a man with a silver ornament, a man dressed in black with a hammer, white horses, a steam, steel, stone, a red-haired woman, a bald-headed man, and a fellow with a crooked nose. And all for 50 cents. But where's my Katie Mahorna? Well, you can't have everything. Come alone. Time we left this unfortunate city of Brooklyn and returned to civilization. <laughs> Tobin, Tobin, my lad. See, the prophecy is coming true. What's coming true, Malone? She said it. Madame Zozo predicted it. She said you would see the ocean. 
But this isn't the ocean. No? What is it, then? It's the, the body of water that separates Coney Island from Manhattan. It's the ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. The self-same ocean that washes the shores of the county Sligo on the Emerald Isle. And this is a ship, just as she said. This isn't a ship. No. What is it, then? A ferry boat. Any fool knows that. The ferry boat between Coney Island and the west side of Manhattan. Doesn't it have motors? Doesn't it have cabins? Doesn't it have this deck we're standing on? Doesn't it have a wheelhouse with a captain? Doesn't it have... What well, doesn't it have what? Well, what are you staring at, Malone? Doesn't it have a fat man and a blonde woman? Where? Standing right there at the railing. That the world is filled with fat men and then beautiful blonde women. But Madame Zozo. Madame Zozo said there would be fire. Where's the fire? Yeah, no! Torben! Uh, what, what, what? I'm burning up! Help me! I'm burning up! You were there. You heard the predictions the ship, the ocean, the blonde woman, the fat man, the fire. And just like that, here they are the future. Is the future spelled out for all to read in Daniel Tobin's palm? Well, I can predict what's going to happen in the next few minutes. Then I shall be back here with Act Two. Poor, forgetful Katie Mahorner, beloved of Daniel Aloysius Tobin. Katie sold Tobin's cottage back home in County Sligo to raise money for a steamship ticket to join Tobin in New York, but she has forgotten where he lives. Will fate conspire to keep them apart or reunite them? Right now, Tobin is having troubles of his own. My ear, it's burning. Tobin, it was an accident. This fat man stuck his lighted cigar into my ear. That's a lie. A lie, is it? Look at my ear. It's half burned off. Why couldn't you look where you're going, you, you, you ruffian? Malone, this fat one is about to swim back to Manhattan. No, Tobin. It wasn't his fault. It's fate. Didn't Madame Zozo predict a fat man, a blonde woman, a fire? Uh, sir, I wish to apologize for my friend. He... He ran into your cigar. I did no such thing. He deliberately stuck it in my ear. Oh, whatever. It was meant to be. It was ordained by fate. You owe him thanks. Go ahead. Thank the man. For what? Don't you understand? For, uh, for being part of the chain of misfortune. I owe thanks for misfortune? You do. For half burning off my ear? Now, this gentleman meant no harm, Tobin. He's, he's but an instrument of fate. Apologize. All right, sir. I offer you my apology. I apologize for running heedless into you and destroying your fine five-cent cigar. My name is Daniel Aloysius Tobin, and any time you need anybody's ear to put out a cigar, I'm at your service. Sir, your handsome apology puts me to shame. My name is Porridge, Ebenezer Porridge, and I must make a confession. You did not run into me. I did not. What I did was deliberate. Do you mean you stuck your cigar in my ear on purpose? The truth. The truth. Always, at all costs. Yes, I did. But... but why? Well, I... I was mad with jealousy. This young lady here, Miss Marcella Garlic, is my fiancée. And I thought you were flirting with her. Me? Flirt? I realize now I was hasty. I'm an engaged man. Katie Mahorner has my entire heart. When she's at my side, I feel as if I am a tiger. Katie, Katie, where is she now? The very idea that someone is lusting after my own true Marcella turns me into a raging killer. Ah, uh, Katie. Who is Katie? My intended. And, and because of Katie, I, I can see the face of no other woman. I who are fortunate, like myself, to be in love. And that is why you were not flirting with my Marcella? I believe you have described the situation. Now, Mr. Tobin, tell me this. If you were not engaged to marry Miss Katie Mahorner, would you then flirt with Miss Garlic? The answer is no. 
No? Did I hear you say no? You did. May I ask why? Because with all due respect, Miss Garlic does not appeal to me. She does not? Again, may I inquire the reason? Well, I, I do not feel that way inclined toward Miss Garlic. Miss Marcella Garlic is not good enough for you. Then, Marcella, did you hear what this this oaf said of you? No, I, I, I didn't say she wasn't good enough. But you wouldn't flirt with her. Why not? Are there other women on this boat you would flirt with? There may be. But not Miss Garlic. <laughs> put up your hands. What? I said put up your hands. You, you'd fight me because I would not flirt with your intended? To the death. Malone, let us leave this fat maniac. I knew you were a coward the moment I laid eyes on you. Tobin, don't hit him. Yeah, but, but, but the man called me a coward. Uh, gentlemen, this hardly calls for bloodshed. Um... Uh, what would satisfy your honor, uh, Mr. Porridge? Let him say he'd flirt with Miss Garlic. Uh, certainly a most delightful way to keep the peace. Uh, Tobin, say you'll be willing to flirt with Mr. Porridge's fiance. Well, uh, uh, go, go ahead. No. No? No. And why not, may I ask? Because I don't know what she looks like. Man, you can see her. She's standing right there in plain view. I still don't know what she looks like. What color's her hair? Her hair's blonde. Anyone can see that. The blonde comes from a bottle of peroxide. Sir, how dare now, you? Now, what's her face like underneath all that powder and paint? So what I say to you, Mr. Porridge, is if you want me to flirt with your fiancé, first you've got to strip her down and scrape her off and let us discover who she is. That shall be your last insult. Look out, Tony. <laughs> Oh, you will, will you? Yeah. All right, I've been waiting for this. Tobin, don't, Tobin, don't, don't throw him overboard. Tobin, you maniac, you maniac, you. Where are you going? I'm going in there after him. You fool, you can't swim. Somebody else will save him. Come on. Where? Where do you think? Down in the saloon deck, the, uh, the other side of the boat. Let's get lost in the crowd. You can get 30 days for assault, man. Yeah, but he assaulted me. You threw him in the water. Come on, don't ask questions of the policeman coming this way. All right, come on. I know where to hide. It's, oh, it's no use, Tobin. Down these stairs. I know the head stoker on this ferry. He'll hide me in the engine room. You there! Oops. Stand still in the name of the law! Oh, you can't escape. Well, have you lost your senses? I'm to be arrested. Uh, even so, you must stand right here. I'll do no such thing. You must. I won't let you escape. John Malone, my best friend, are you selling me out? Hold on. There's no time. That policeman's almost here. I can't let you. Let go of me, Malone. The policeman. Look at the policeman. Remember what Madame Zuzu said. You will meet a man with a silver ornament. She meant a policeman. See, his silver badge. Malone, if I go to prison, I'll never forgive you. Uh, what have I got to do with it? It's written in your palm. You there! You're under arrest! Now, officer, I, I, I was standing peaceful at the rail with my friend. Ah, here. that's what they are saying. I don't fight at home, my lad. See the badge. What a beautiful silver ornament. Oh, how wonderful fate is working for you tonight. How marvelous. Is that a fact? I get my ear half burned off. Oh, it's not that bad. I'm placed under arrest like a common criminal. You'll be vindicated in the end. You'll see. Officer, I'm telling the truth. It was self-defense. Don't tell it to me. Tell it to the judge. Sit here and wait till your case is called. Well, what will uh, happen to me? You won't be hanged, at least. Uh, I don't think so. Whatever happens, Tobin, my lad, happens because of fate. Fate? Yes, fate makes all the decisions. And it's fate that leads you towards Katie Mahorner. Is that the truth now? Uh, or away from Katie Mahorner. Oh, you've always been a great comfort to me, Malone. Thirty days. Next case. Ah, uh, uh, it's him. It's who? Judge Murphy, 30 days, next case. Well, what about Judge Murphy? All I can tell you is you're going to get 30 days. 30 days? But I... That's do. what he gives everybody. Doesn't matter what you did. You played innocent or guilty. When it's all over, he says... 30 days. Next case. 30 days? How can I go to jail for 30 days? The prophecy, the prediction, it's all coming true. Madam Zozo said there would be a man dressed in black. That's the judge in his robes with a hammer. See? It's his gavel. Oh, we should never have gone to that crazy Madame Zozo. It would have all come out the same way. This is your fate. How can you fight it? 
<laughs> Cheer up, Tobin, my lad. I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. Thirty days. Next case. That's you. What's the charge, officer? Uh, assault, Your Honor. He threw a man off the Coney Island ferry boat. What's your name? Uh, Daniel Aloysius Tobin. How do you plead? Well, Your Honor, guilty. Thirty days. Next case. But, but, Your Honor, I wasn't exactly guilty. Then do you wish to plead innocent? Y yes, sir. Very well. Thirty days. But, Your Honor, I have an explanation. No. What do you want to bother with that for? Isn't every American citizen entitled to habeas corpus or rigor mortis? And... I'll take it under advisement. What I did was for the man's own benefit. And, uh, is this going to be a long explanation? No, Your Honor. It's most unfair of you, Mr. Tobin. Look at the line of people waiting to be sentenced. I mean, waiting for justice. We have to keep moving. Now, did you or did you not throw a man into the water from the Coney Island ferry boat? Yes, sir. But I had a good reason. What was it? To cool him off. Which is exactly what we propose to do for you. Place you in a nice cool cell. Thirty days. Next case. Well, Tobin, my lad. Keep away from me. Keep away. Is that how you talk to your best pal after I come all the way uptown to visit? If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in here. Don't blame me. It's fate. Besides, you'll be out in two more weeks. Two more weeks? I won't live that long. Now, two weeks. What's two weeks? Two weeks in Hades, Malone. That's what I face. You can't be as bad as that. Do you know where they put me, Malone? In the laundry. The steam laundry. Oh, the steam laundry. Wait. Why, that's marvelous. Oh, leave me, Malone, leave but me. But don't you understand? It's bad enough I got 30 days in the steam laundry for assault, but if you say another word, I'll get the rope for murder. Don't you know what it means? Madame Zozo's prophecy is absolutely accurate, and it's on schedule. Everything, everything she has predicted has come true in every detail. The ocean, the boat, the fat man, the blonde woman figure, the, the man with the silver ornament, the man dressed in black with the hammer, and now steel, stone, which is the prison, and steam, the laundry. It's happening, Tobin. It's happening. What's happening? Fate. Fate should have to work in a steam laundry. And now what's left? The red-haired girl. But Katie Mahorna does not have red hair. The red-haired girl, the bald-headed man, the white horses... And the man with the crooked nose. I, I tell you, Tobin, I can hardly wait. He'll have to wait. And so will we. For a few minutes, anyhow. Until we return with Act Three. Which is where fate becomes final for everyone. Will Tobin be reunited with the beautiful, if somewhat forgetful, Katie Mahorner in the end? Don't place me in such a compromising position... You know I can't give away any secrets. I could not love thee half as much. Did I not love honor more? Yes, yeah, some of the most beautiful love poetry in the world has been written in prison. Daniel Aloysius Tobin, who is madly in love with Katie Mahorner, is also in prison. But he's not writing poetry. He's sweating away his sentence in the steam laundry. Well, as you know, all things come to an end. Even Tobin's 30-day sentence. And on the day of blessed release, he is met at the gate by his faithful friend Malone. Tobin, my good lad. You keep a safe distance away from me, Malone, or I shall not be responsible for my actions. Is this the way you talk to your best friend? What a sad, pathetic creature I am to have the likes of you for a friend. Come, Tobin, I'll buy you a drink. No, I want nothing from you. You shall introduce me to no further mischief. I? You hold me responsible. Well, if it hadn't been for you, I would never have had my ear half burned away. An exaggeration. I served 30 days in the workhouse. Is that an exaggeration, too? Tobin, it's fate. Your fate is written in the palm of your hand. And now we must look for the red-haired girl. Which red-haired girl? The one Madame Zozo said we would meet. Remember? The white horses. The red-haired girl. The bald-headed man. No, I, I, I don't want to meet anyone else. But these are all the people who will lead you to Katie, my honor. No. 
The state decrees that I'm to meet Katie Mahoney, then I shall meet her without white horses and red-haired girls and bald-headed men. And men with crooked noses, don't forget. No. Now let me be, Malone. I shall go my own way, to my own small room, and there I shall sit and wait. But you cannot avoid the rest of those people. They are already in your palm. Well, they will have to do the best they can without me. And Katie Mahoney. What will be? But... No, I'm, I'm going home. My mind's made up. Come in. Oh, it's only you. Yes, it's only me. Only your best friend. Only a person who stays awake all night and plans all day for you. Tobin, listen to me. Darn no, never again. But you must. Look at your palm, Tobin. It's there. Every secret of your future is there. Then let it stay there. Uh, the game, Tobin, the game must be played out to the end. Who says so? Fate. Fate again. Not again, but still. Tobin, you're standing still, and your fate is standing still. It's a little matter to me. But don't you see? Fate is being delayed like a... A train being held in the station because the track is not clear. You must carry out the design of fate. You must have this encounter with the white horse, the red-haired girl, and the bald-headed man. All I want is my Katie Mahorna. But Katie is on the train. What train? The train of fate that is being held up in the station, and you're holding it up. Every time I listen to you. But it isn't me. It's all in the palm of your hand. Come we can't keep Katie Mahorn waiting on that train. But we don't even know if she's on that train. Then, what have we got to lose? We? I'm with you, Tobin. I'm with you all the way. Oh, yes, the way you were with me for 30 days in the steam laundry. Uh, Tobin, she's waiting. Katie Mahorn is waiting. <laughs> Well, I must say, the streets are filled with horses, red-haired women, and bald-headed men. Uh, yes, Tobin, my lad, but not in combination. Malone, why can't you leave me in peace? Because there is no peace for you until you find Katie Mahorner. There's no peace for me till I'm rid of you. Uh, uh, Tobin, look. There, across the street. Well? Sitting in that carriage, a girl. A beautiful girl with red hair. Oh, Tobin, can you mistake that flaming red hair? And the horses, white horses, two white horses. Ah, now where's the bald-headed man? A man, a tall man is headed for the carriage. Is he bald? I don't know. He's wearing a hat. If he's bald, these are our people. Wait a minute, wait. He, he, he's stopping to chat with the lady on the sidewalk. He takes off his hat. Tobin, <gasps> he's bald. Not a hair on his head. What, what, what's supposed to happen now? Wait, wait, Tobin, for a sign. It was foretold. The white horses, the red-haired girl, the bald-headed man, they will lead you to a man with a crooked nose who, in turn, will take you to Katie Mahorner. I don't believe a word wait, of it. Wait, 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 For what? <laughs> Tobin, look, 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 the horses, they've gone mad. They're going to bolt. Tobin, get mad, man. Where are you going? Hey, easy. Easy there. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy. Oh, there, fellas. Everything's going to be just fine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, that, that, that's it. That's it. Now, easy there. Easy. Oh, yeah. so, uh, so how can I... And my daughter ever thank you? The tea... Oh, this brave man. My goodness, she's fainted. My name is Colonel Penrith. You must come home with me. Uh, well, sir, I... Uh, we must discuss a suitable reward. You... You've saved a life. Well, anyone could have done it. Yes, but you were the one who did. Well, I was glad to have been oh, well, help. Where are you going? Come back here, sir. Stop that man. Hey, Somebody stop that man. Tobin, Tobin, you fool. Tobin, come back here. Wait here, Colonel. I'll get him for you. Tobin. Well, I must say, what is the meaning of that? Fate. A fate. Of course it was fate. Do you, do you know who that was? Colonel Fenris, the millionaire. And you ran away from him. Had to save his daughter's life. I had to run away from him. You had to run away from a millionaire. A grateful millionaire. Why? Because then I would have lost Katie Mahorna forever. What? What does Katie Mahorna have to do with it? He wished to reward me, didn't he? And uh, what would the reward have been? Letitia? Letitia? His daughter, Letitia. 
You mean she wouldn't have fallen in love with the strong, brave, handsome lad who saved her life? It does happen. And uh, as long as you cannot be sure you will ever find Katie Mahorner why a, a bird in the hat. That's why I ran from there. I was beginning to have the same thoughts myself. It might not be so bad. The girl is beautiful. Rich. Not another word, do you hear? I will not be untrue to Katie Mahona for all the money in the world. All right. Spend the rest of your life looking for her. And one day, when you're bent and withered and old, you'll run into... Tobin. Tobin. What is it now? That man standing on the corner. Well, what about him? A tall man, decently dressed. The nose on him, Tobin. The proboscis. It's crooked. Right, yes, that I admit. It makes two twists from bridge to end like the wiggle of a snake. He's the one Madame Zozo told about. Well, that he may well be, but I'll have no part of him. But Tobin, he's the end of the bad luck. There is no end to bad luck. I'll never find my Katie. Tobin, it must be played out to the end. Otherwise, you'll never know. All right. But this is the last of it. Well, good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Uh, might I inquire as to your name? Uh, my name? It's Maximus G. Friedenhausen. Well, that's a good size. Uh, do you spell it with an O anywhere down the length and breadth of it? No. You see him alone? He's not our man. Uh, sir, uh, you are in the presence of myself, John Malone, and uh, my young friend, Daniel Tobin. I appreciate the honor. And uh, now, since I cannot conceive that you would hold a spelling bee on a street corner at midnight, uh, would you name some reasonable excuse for being at large? Well, she said we would meet you. Uh, who? The Egyptian palmist. And now you found me. Well, my good luck is supposed to begin. And what is supposed to happen? Well, I, 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 I would find her. Well, who is she? My fiancé from the old country. Have you misplaced her somewhere? The fact is, sir, she's misplaced herself. Tell me more about her. Ah, there's nothing to tell, and I, I can't waste any more of my time standing on a street corner with a gentleman as homely as yourself. But I must know about it. And what affair is it of yours? <laughs> my walk in life is the, the literary. I wander about in the night seeking idiosyncrasies on the earth and the truth in heaven. And it's my hope to write a book to reconcile it all. And you'll put me in a book? No, not yet. The covers couldn't hold you. You see, Malone, the fortune teller has betrayed us. He has the crooked nose, but what else can he offer? Hospitality, gentlemen? Hospitality? The saloons are about to close. Well, why not come to my place? Just down the street. Well, no, thank you. Uh, Tobin, can we reject this gentleman's kind offer? A free meal? Is this the good fortune that was predicted? I tell you, the axe will fall. What axe? Very well. I've been burned, suffocated, and almost trampled to death. What could happen to me now? I see by the signs that my wife is retired, but the maid is up. So what do you gentlemen say to some fine cold fowl, a bottle or two of ale, some cheese? Well, I'll tell the girl to prepare it. Excuse me. Oh, these fellas who write, all they want to do is turn you inside out for their purposes. He seems pleasant enough. Uh, you want a book to come out exposing your innermost secrets? Not I. He won't get anything from me. And don't you say a word about Katie Mahoney, do you hear? I won't have her indecently exposed in some cheap book. But it may not be a cheap book. And, and besides, if she read it, she'd know you were looking for her. Hold on. Maybe this is how you find her. He writes the story. You hold on. If you so much as mention the name Katie Mahoney, I... Right? Let, da, let go, let, let go of my throat, Tom. You promise? I, I promise. Well, gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed our little repast. Well, yes, thank you. And uh, now I, I, I think we'd better leave. So soon. Well, thank you for your hospitality. Uh, uh, Malone? You say you're looking for your fiancé. Did I say that? Yeah, when we met on the street. I'm sure it must be an interesting story. 
But now it's the kind of story you hear every day. Ah, those are the most interesting. Malone, we're leaving. Well, can't I offer you something else? A uh, cup of coffee, maybe? Hey, you must forgive him, sir. He's been out of sorts ever since that fiancé of his has been misplaced. I would like to hear that story. Well, you won't. Are you coming, Malone? Are you sure you can't be persuaded to have a cup of coffee? Uh, no, we'd uh, better leave him be. When he gets into this kind of mood, there's uh, no doing anything with him. <laughs> Very well. I'm sorry. Good fortune, she said. You'll meet a crooked-nosed man who'll bring you good fortune. Is this the good fortune? A cold chicken, a bottle of ale, a chunk of cheese? And a cup of coffee. I say, thank you, sir, and good night. Uh, Tobin, uh... Smell that coffee. Mmm, it's best cup of coffee in New York. Well, enjoy it without me. Everyone marvels at how she makes it. After all, she's just a green girl just landed here three months ago. Oh, oh, there you are, Katie Mahorn. Set it down. Katie, Katie. Why, uh, it, 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 I've been looking all over for you. Katie, it's me. I know, I know. Uh, my fiancé and my own true love. Katie, I live not three blocks from here. So many people know me. Couldn't you have asked for I me? I did, I did. I asked, I asked everybody, but... It was no good. Why? Because I... Because I... I'd forgotten your name. Now, what do you suppose that means? Hmm, what does it matter? When O'Henry was writing, psychiatry had not yet been discovered. Well, yes, it had been. And the psyche, of course, has always existed. It's just that most people didn't pay very much attention to it. Well, you pay attention when I return with more of the psyche. Where is our fate written? It depends on who you listen to. Some say it's written in the stars. Some say it's written in the books of the gods. And some say, as we have heard tonight, that it is written in the palm of our hands. Of course, there are those who say it isn't written at all by anyone, anywhere. One thing you know is definitely written, and that's the entertainment you may enjoy here. Our cast included Robert Dryden, Fred Gwynn, Jack Grimes, Marion Seldes, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>